I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom me.
Good afternoon. Welcome to the church at Meet here at Malden. We're glad each one of you back here with us tonight. I hope each one of you has picked up a bulletin. I say you can go over the things listed in the bulletin. I will add a few things. Let's remember the shut-ins that's in the bulletin are sick. And also uh, Deborah Clark, she was supposed to have surgery, I think it was this past Friday. She did not have it due because she had infection. That's the reason they didn't, wasn't able to do it. So let's remember her on that. Also, uh, I got Vernon to tell, was a friend of ours. Uh, he, uh, he used to race, and then his son, and his, uh, their daughter's all and sons race with us now. But he was in a real bad car accident yesterday. No, Friday. No, Thursday, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'll get it right in a minute. It was Thursday because it was uh, Thanksgiving that afternoon when he was in it. And he's in the Spartanburg Regional Hospital and he's in very critical condition. Uh, so let's keep that family and keep him in our prayers. Also, I seen it's, it looks like it's pretty well full, but the Sunshine Basket sign up sheet, it's in the hallway on the uh, bulletin board. Also, let's remember the brunch and order exchange December the 10th, and they are a sign-up sheet for that. The annual shopping December 3rd, that'll be next Saturday, as a sheet on the bulletin board. And also, if anyone wants to donate to help with this shopping trip, see Susanna. I think that's all announcements we have. Enter our worship service tonight. Our song leader will be Joel Foster. Our lesson by Dennis Stride, our closing prayer by Mike Brown, and our opening prayer will be with Joel Foster. Bow with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we approach your throne this evening with thanksgiving for the many blessings that you give to us from day to day that we do not deserve. We're thankful for these blessings. We do pray that these blessings will continue, that you will keep us strong in the faith, that you will keep us growing. Father, there's so many that are in need of our prayer. We have quite a number that are sick, the ones that Brother Dale has mentioned, Sister Deborah. Dale's friend and others that are sick, we pray that you can bring your healing upon them as only you can. Be with the doctors and the nurses that wait upon them, care for them, that they'll do those things that are necessary for their continued healing. We pray that you would comfort them in the meantime. Father, we have those that have wandered away from your fold, and we pray that you would help us to, any time that we contact them, that we can reach out in a loving way in hopes that they will return to your fold before it's everlasting too late. Father, we pray that you be with Brother Dennis this evening as he brings us the message. We pray that you be with each of us our minds take these things in father there's so much that we need there are so many reminders that we need we're thankful for your word for those that proclaim your word we pray that we will use these things as spiritual growth in our lives be with us as we sing these songs this evening that we will sing in the spirit and the understanding. Be with our leaders, our first responders, our military. Protect them as only you can. Defeat them in those things that are wrong. And we pray that the church the world over might be strengthened, that we can be a light to your word to a lost and dying world. In all things, Father, your will be done. For we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
three, three, six. Three, three, six. Mm -hmm. Is it for me, dear Savior, thy glory and thy rest? For me so weak and sinful, oh, shall I be so blessed? Oh, Savior, my Redeemer, what can I but adore and magnify and praise thee and love thee evermore? O Savior, precious Savior, my heart is in thy feet. I bless thee and thy love. Oh. 
charge moment would be five, one, seven. Five, one, seven. I sent out a text last night to a bunch of folks with the recording of this song. I know that a bunch of people here know it already, but I wanted to make sure I don't, I've said it before, I don't like to introduce songs without people knowing it, but we have enough that know it. I'm not picking on her, but I appreciate what Susan did. Susan said in attempt that, she said she was intrigued by the words of this song. She did some research on the song and sent me a very nice article explaining the song. I wrote her back and I said, I appreciate it, a real good article. In essence, that's what Dennis is fixing to do for us tonight. So uh, I'm not picking on her because I wish that more were interested in the words of the song. There's some songs we sing that have words in it and people don't have any idea what they are. They're old English and such as that, or they're words we don't use in common language. And people just sing them right on and don't get inquisitive what it means. I like to stick up on the slides. If there's one of those words, you'll sometimes see a bold black down below with the word and what it means. So that helps, but you have to try to catch that as you're going through the song. Um, first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 15, Paul said, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. And that, of course, is the English Standard Version. Uh, the King James Version says understanding. In the Amplified Version, it has parenthetical after the word mind says, with words I understand. So it's very good for us to understand what we are singing. This is popular at camp. Others, I believe Vicki told me that this is Dennis' favorite song, but we need to understand what we're singing. So don't understand it when we go through it tonight. Dennis will be filling us in on that shortly. I haven't had a new song in a while, but I had to pull it out when he pulled the scripture out. Is <laughs> my Doesn't stray much. Joel's 
pumpkin patch reminded me of that pumpkin pie in the refrigerator at home. Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 15. Paul writes here, what then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death, or of obedience which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, you become slaves of righteousness. If someone wants to know how we are different than other good people, the easiest thing that we can do is to call ourselves disciples of Christ. But what does it mean? What does it mean to be a disciple? Paul uses a few other words to describe discipleship. July 4th is one of our major holidays in this country. And we call it Independence Day. And if there is something that Americans believe in is their independence. We love our republic, representative republic form of democracy. We like to vote for our favorite candidates and we like to vote against those we don't care for. We love our rights, especially our inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if I were to ask you to defend the concept of individual rights from the Bible, I believe that we would find it a lot more difficult. And the reason is simple enough. We belong to God, and God does not belong to us. The easier and more biblical concept is that of slavery. It's not a popular concept today for obvious reasons. There are even a lot of our English translations of the Bible that shy away from the word. Uh, we like to use the term bond servant or servant. But the original wording from the Greek that we do find in the American Standard Version is slave. The slave. The point that Paul makes in the text that I read is that we are slaves, and that is a fact. The only individual choice that we make is what we are a slave to, or who we want to serve. But before we get any further into our text in Roman chapter 6, let's go to a situation that Moses talks about in Exodus chapter 21. This kind of explains what probably Susan had sent Joel and uh, a little bit more that we all have that understanding in the first six verses. It says, now, these are the judgments which you will set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant six years, he will serve you. And in the seventh year, he shall go free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, his wife will go with him. If his master has given him a wife, and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant plainly says, I love my master, wife, and my children, I will not go out free. And his master will bring him before the judges. And he shall also bring him to the door, or to the doorpost. And his master shall bore through his ear with an awl. And he shall serve 
him forever. It's kind of a picture, isn't it? A person who chooses to stay with his master because he loves his master, because he loves his family. The things that he received while he was a slave. But his willingness to be a slave forever came with a price. His ear was pierced with an awl. Not something that is very hygienic when we come to think of how things are done today. But it was done. What is happening is a picture. The master takes this person to God. Presumably where the judgment of God is given or verified by the judges who speak on behalf of God. Then the master would take his slave to the doorpost of the house. More than likely it's his master's own home. Drives that all through the earlobe signifying this man is permanently attached to this house. The point is, is that this man chooses to remain a slave forever. We don't know if there was ever a ring or some sort of a tag that was placed in the ear for others to see and to know. Many believe that a ring was used because that was customary in the other countries around Israel. But Paul would write in 1 Corinthians 1 or 6 and verse 20 that we were bought with a price. That's something we need to be mindful of and to think about. Because we can't buy something that's not on sale. You know, I don't know about you, but I get texts every week of somebody wanting to know how much I want for my house. Even though it's not for sale. We have, in our lives, sold ourselves to sin. But Christ came along. And he purchased us from our master of sin. And now, we're going to live willingly with our new master. Peter calls it redemption. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 19, we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. The word redeem is to buy back. And while Jesus sets us free from sin, he does not set us free to live for ourselves. He sets us free to live the best life that we can live ones who are bound to him forever. So now we'll go back to our text in Romans chapter 6. Verses 15 through 18. Now that bondage, that word bondage, is kind of has some scary annotations with it. It's hard for us to imagine someone who has been abducted and bound by their captors. But that's what sin does to us. It entangles us, it binds us, and it was Jesus who came and set us free from that terrible bondage. What is amazing is that real freedom is not living the way we want or how we feel at the moment. But real freedom is not living in the bondage of sin. So how do we show our Savior that we want to be his slave forever? In a word we call it obedience. We call Jesus, our Lord, which means master. He buys us back from sin, and we are owned by him. 
Now, for some, that terminology may not sit well, but it is a biblical understanding. We can choose. We can choose sin or we can choose to obey God, but that is only as far as our choices can go. Let's look at one account we find in Luke chapter 7. It's in verses 7 through 10. It is the account of the centurion who had come to Jesus in order that his servant may be healed. And it reads, Therefore, I did not presume to you, but to come to you, but say the word, and let my servant be healed. For I, too, am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned around, and he said to the people that followed him, I tell you, and not even in Israel have I found such faith. And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. This servant had done nothing to merit anything. And not only are we a slave, a servant, but we've done nothing to merit the favor of our master. Even if we lived the perfect sinless life, all we have simply done was our duty. And if we get to heaven, it won't be because we did enough humanitarian works. It won't be because we were here for all of our services and activities. It won't be because we evangelized a lot of people. It will only happen because of the grace that has been given to us by our Master. I want to close this evening by taking you to the words of Jesus in Matthew 6 and verse 24, where he tells us that no man can serve two masters. For he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. You can never be a slave to two different masters. You cannot do that at the same time. And even if that was possible, you could never obey either of them equal. We have to make a choice on who gets our loyalty. Unlike any earthly master, our master wants, wants what's best for us. Most earthly masters want what's best for them. The master we serve sees us as valuable. He loves us for not what we can do for him because he started a relationship by creating us. We have belonged to him from the very beginning, from our own conception. We choose, we choose to either ignore that relationship or we intentionally choose to leave that relationship. Either way, we thought our way was the most fun, the most fulfilling. But in truth, we didn't deserve ourselves. We serve a master called sin. It deluded us, it blinded us, and let us think that we are in control of our own destiny. And all along, we were just a puppet. Come a time, a point in our lives, and many of us here, we come to our senses and realize just how far we've fallen. The things that we wanted, we couldn't obtain. 
We didn't have a relationship with God. But the love of God came to this earth. It paid a very steep price that sin demanded. Death. And then having conquered that death, this master, this wonderful master called us. Now we had that choice. We could serve the master that was killing us. Or we could go and run to the arms of the one who paid the price that we could never pay. Most of us chose a new master. The one who loves us. The one who cares for us. And more importantly, the one who has prepared a place for us where we can spend eternity. What are we called to do to obey this master? Not out of the fear that he will hate us, but out of the love for the grace that he continually gives us. If we do consider ourselves a slave of Jesus Christ, then we are defined as the one who lives for his master. Our master was nailed to the cross. But all we need to do is just offer our ear. We offer ourselves to him just as we are. We're not great. But he makes us feel free. Free from the evil that is killing us. He offers us all that type of freedom. For everyone who will come and obey his gospel. If that is you this evening, and it is your choice tonight to obey that gospel, to have your sins washed away in New Testament baptism, and through your repentance, your confession, the faith that you have, he will take you into his arms. He will pierce your ear and make you his own. If you are a child of Christ, if you have found that that piercing that you had has closed up, and you need to rededicate yourself. We want to give you that opportunity also. If anyone has a need this evening, won't you come? As together we stand and we sing. All things are ready. Come to the feast. Come for the table now is spread. Ye famishing, ye weary, come and thou shalt be rich.
Will you bow with me, please? Our God and Father in heaven, as we gather around this table of remembrance, Lord, we pray that as we partake of this, the bread that represents your son's body, that we do in a manner, Lord, that brings honor, glory to you and to your son, and the body is represented in this bread. Pray, Lord, that, that we discern ourselves, put ourselves in that right frame of mind. In the Son, Jesus' name we pray. continue in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful, Lord, for these emblems that represent your Son, Jesus Christ, and that tremendous sacrifice that he made on our stead. And we ask your blessings now on this fruit of the vine that represents the blood of your Son, Jesus, that was shed on that cross to cleanse this world of its sin. And we are more than excited, Lord, that death did not keep him that his resurrection gave us all that hope of eternal life. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. That's going to be left on the table for those who did not have the opportunity this morning to give. Bow with me, please. Our Father in heaven, you have blessed us so richly in this life. You have blessed us, Lord, with our families, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. You have blessed us so richly with the grace that you have offered to all of us. And you have blessed us, Lord, to be caretakers of those things that you have allowed us to have. So we pray, Lord, that you will accept these gifts that we return to you, that it will be used, Lord, to further thy work, your kingdom on this earth, and that you be able to help us, Lord, to help others to come to you and to give us the strength always, Lord, to do those things that are right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, if right after services, if I could get the men from the business meeting, if you'll meet up front here for just a moment, I'd appreciate it very much. At this time, if there's nothing further, if you'll please stand and we'll be dismissed with prayer. Let us pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity that we got to assemble again in our household of faith. Father, we pray that each and everything that we do in our services will be beneficial to all. And we pray, Father, that each and everything we do will glorify thee. We ask, Father, that you will be with the ones that are sick and afflicted and whatever is wrong, that any kind of ailments that they have, that you will heal them and that they can return again at the next appointed time. Father, we also pray that the ones that were in the car wrecks and that you will take care of them, their, their needs, and get them restored back to health again. And Father, we pray that you will continue to bless this church house here that as a church that we will continue to do thy will and spread thy word and we pray father that each and every sermon that we hear at the congregation we can apply it to our everyday lives and we ask father that you will go on through the remainder of this night with us as they take care of the rest of the business for this church house we ask father that you forgive us of our sins Amen. Amen. Amen.